This person thinks they can egg me on into upping the ante. It's going to take a lot more than just claiming that I'm copping out to get me to put both my channels on the... Fuck. So yes, it's official. I am doubling down, and if I use Windows at all for the next month, I will be deleting both of my channels. That is a scary thing to say, but I am a man of my word and I am that confident. So, the first initial switch over to Linux, which I covered in my last video, give that a watch if you haven't already, was relatively painless. Relatively. But what is it like to actually make a video on Linux? Let's find out. I'm Michael Kratiker, welcome to MK Computing. So, I break down making my videos into five steps. Writing, filming, editing, thumbnail, and uploading. Let's start with the writing process. Writing a script on Linux is just like it is on Windows. You might just not be able to use Word to do it. I don't have that problem because I don't use Word. I actually use Google Docs to write my scripts. So for me, writing doesn't change at all. I just go to the Google Docs website and start writing. If you like using a locally installed program to write documents, there are plenty of free and open source ones for you to download and try. I recommend the LibreOffice suite of apps, which includes replacements for most of the Microsoft Office suite, and each one works very similarly to Office. But this goes completely as expected, and I'm able to get my script written just fine. Next up is filming. Now, for me, there's not much that I use my computer for in the filming stage of content creation. I use my phone to record all of my videos. However, if you record using a webcam, Linux has you covered there as well. Although I will say that not every webcam will have Linux support. There are plenty of laptops I've installed Linux onto with built-in webcams that don't work. Now, the main thing that worried me in the filming process was I was concerned that maybe Linux wouldn't recognize my iPhone when I plugged it in, or that maybe Apple would have some kind of stupid blacklist for the Linux operating system and wouldn't allow me to transfer files. But it looks like neither one of those was an issue. I plugged my iPhone in, it asked me if I wanted to trust my computer, I hit allow, and boom, there we go, I have access to my iPhone. And actually, I have a little more access to it than I did on Windows. On Windows, this is the only thing I had access to, a folder with my pictures and videos. But on Linux, I have access to documents from different apps. Okay, we have all the footage we need, now let's get into editing. As stated in my last video, getting my editing software of choice to work on Linux was my biggest concern, but it installed and it works out of the box, with almost no issues. I did notice that my camera footage doesn't have any sound when I try putting it into my editing software. <laughs> uh, yep. It's always something. I've got no sound. And that's due to the Linux version of DaVinci Resolve not having support for AAC audio codec. But this isn't really that big of an issue for me. All I had to do was change the codec that my phone records in, and there we go, I've got sound. Editing is just like it is on Windows, although the experience is a little bit better for me on Linux. It seems to run a bit better, and I had this problem on Windows where when I brought my footage over, I would tell the timeline to match the settings of my footage, which is 4K 24fps. However, when I would go to the rendering process, the render settings wouldn't be in 4K. Then I'll have to go into the timeline settings to directly change it to 4K for the render settings to be correct, but in Linux, I tell it to match the clips when I import them, and it actually does. Crazy, I know. But I do run into a minor annoyance when choosing where I want my render clip to go. I put all my clips and finished videos on an external hard drive, but as far as I can tell, I can't save my footage directly to that hard drive as it doesn't show up as a file location in DaVinci. I have to save it to my internal SSD and then transfer it over to my external hard drive. A little annoying, but not that bad. Almost there, I just have to create my thumbnail. Now, on Windows, I use Photoshop to make my thumbnails, but as I stated in my last video, Adobe has terrible support for the Linux operating system. Wait, I'm sorry, did I say they have terrible support? I meant they have no support at all. Sometimes you can get Windows programs without native Linux support to run just fine through Windows or through containers like with bottles. But as far as I know, no one has been able to get any of Adobe's current creative suite of apps to work on Linux. I could just set up a Windows VM and get Photoshop running that way, 
But for one, I feel like that goes against the spirit of this challenge a little bit, since I technically would be using Windows. And secondly, I've actually been wanting to leave the Adobe ecosystem for a while now. I hate paying a monthly fee just to make dumb pictures that people might want to click on. So this challenge is a nice opportunity for me to pull the trigger and get rid of Photoshop for good. I decided to go with Photopea as my replacement. Since my last video, I've gotten a few people telling me that GIMP is the way to go when finding a Photoshop replacement. I thank you all for your input, however, I don't really want to use GIMP. I remember trying it out a while ago when I first tried getting rid of Photoshop, and I just remember not really liking it. Photop just looks and feels a lot more like Photoshop to me, which I am much more comfortable with. Not that GIMP is a bad option. And Photop does have its problems as well, like in-app ads, which are annoying. And if I get too tired of them, I definitely will be switching to GIMP. But for now, Photop is working just fine for me, and I have no problems using it to make thumbnails for my videos. All that's left is uploading, which goes without a hitch. I was a little scared that Google might not allow for uploading from a Linux machine, since some websites don't allow you to download from or straight up even use them if you're using the OS. But there were absolutely no problems uploading from my computer to YouTube. It was exactly the same experience as it is on Windows, and... That about does it, my video is up now. At least that does it from what my workflow looks like. If you have any questions or think I could do something better, let me know in the comments. I think the next video in this series will be regarding gaming on Linux, so if you want to see that, hit subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks for watching.